Welcome to today's briefing, I'm Aaron. Thanks to Ground News for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go over to the Gulf of Oman, just south of the Strait of Hormuz, where we're seeing a buildup of American forces in this region, unlike anything we've seen since 2020. Now, since then, Iran has grown more and more belligerent following the psychology of psychopathic behavior. The extremists of Iran have escalated attacks on civilian traffic, including the capture of an American unmanned surface vessel like the one we see here. Now, the White House has ordered assets be put in place near the Straits of Hormuz to protect our interest in the region. This includes a detachment of Special Operations Forces, Helicopter Combat Squadron 26, and over 3,000 troops and sailors are in position to take action at the Commander-in-Chief's discretion. So the situation is still developing, and I'll keep you informed and updated as events unfold. But my personal opinion is, is this one's going to go hot. Shots will be fired here between now and the 2024 election. So Iran should consider itself on notice. The Americans are back. And we have a commander-in-chief administration that would like four more years in the White House. Now, many of you ask me, where do I get my stories? What are my sources? Well, I use Ground News. Ground News is a great tool where you can get a balanced view of all the current stories being reported around the world. For instance, the story we're talking about today is the 3,000 troops going to the Red Sea amid uh, Iran tensions. And you can sort the news articles from every news source reporting on this story by things like left, right, and center perspectives, or you can just mix them all right here. Go. Uh, if you go to bias distribution, it'll break down of the 27 outlets reporting on this story, which ones are left leaning, which ones are center specifically by brand name, and which ones are right. You can learn who owns these media outlets by going down to the ownership model here and clicking more details. And it breaks it down by independent news, governments, private equity like hedge funds, you know, owning these uh, media outlets. Here's a good one. Robert Mercer is a huge, wealthy private owner of, uh, of a media outlet. Read them. And I love the fact that I can pick one story like the one we're talking about today and get multiple uh, perspectives on the same thing. It gives me a more balanced view of the world and world news, in my opinion. A big one here is factuality. And all of these are either mixed or high factuality history. Ground so News has a mobile app with a map feature that's incredible. You can sort what stories are being reported by location. It's just another great function that gives you information about who and how a story is being reported. It's a very intelligent way to consume the news. I want you to go to ground.news forward slash subbrief to stay fully informed on all the latest naval news in one place. Sign up or subscribe through my link before August 31st, 2023 for 30% off unlimited access to read news you might otherwise miss. All right, so let's take a look at the United States Naval Institute's fantastic weekly graphic of our fleet deployments. Let's begin in the South Pacific. Here we have the Ronald Reagan Carrier Strike Group is conducting operation in the Celeb Sea. Uh, they just wrapped up Talisman Sabre 2023 with Australia and about a dozen other countries. It's a great exercise we do every other year with Australia. Now, a good metric of a fleet is how they recover from such a demanding exercise. So here you can see flight operations continue as required, despite the surge they just experienced. Compare that to China and Russia and what they'll do with their ships when they finish their summer deployment. We won't see those Russian utiloids for at least another year. Take a look at this amphibious capability. This is the USS America, Australia's HMAS Adelaide, Japan's JS Izumo, and Korea's Murado amphibious ships. These ships can put thousands of boots on a beach in a morning. And this is the strength of our allies. This is why we can maintain superiority in the Pacific theater, despite the issues that I often point out with our Navy procurement and maintenance. Despite our faults, we are stronger together with our allies. All right, let's move over to the Mediterranean Sea where the Gerald R. Ford Carrier Stripe Group continues their deployment supporting. Here's a great shot from the Gerald R. Ford flight deck of night flight operations with a young sailor. This photo shows the sense of pride the sailor must have. And it's one thing the Navy gave me. Uh, the Navy entrusted me with the enormous responsibility as a 19 year old that in civilian life, I never would have had that amount of responsibility at that young age. And having success with the great responsibility at 19, 20 years old really shapes who that person becomes later in life, gives them the confidence to really take chances and, and develop themselves. Along with the carrier strike group though, is an Italian Navy Tordado uh, class submarine called Siri. And here's some great photos of them providing ASW targeting services and training for the carrier strike group in the Ionian Sea. 
this is a lot of fun. This is something I've done before. And uh, whenever I saw this shot, it really brought back a lot of memories. So let me tell you the story behind this photo right here. Uh, to, to the layman, they're like, hey, this, this submarine's obviously been caught, been photographed by the helicopter or the drone. Uh, that's overhead, maybe at a P8, who knows. Uh, but that's there's a lot more to this than that. The way this works is the day before um, the training begins, the submarine will detach from the group if it's part of the formation and get in its uh, position to begin the exercise the following morning. And so when the uh, exercise begins, uh, the submarine conducts its attack. And in every single one of these I did in a 20 year career, we always sunk the heavy and a lot of the escorts and sometimes the entire fleet before we were detected. And with the, with those units being eliminated, they only had the air assets left to come in and find us. And sometimes they couldn't even do that. In one case, we reset the exercise, went back to our starting position and sunk the fleet again. <laughs> Submarines have such an advantage over our surface counterparts, especially with today's technologies. It's not even fair. It, it's, it's like an NFL football team uh, playing a JV a high school football team. You just run over them every time. So how did this happen? Well, eventually, after they get sunk enough, they say, hey, uh, we're not getting any training value out of this. Would you come to the surface, raise your mast and antennas so we can get a position on you, and then you go evade as we go to prosecute you? And that way, uh, all the submarine or uh, all the air aviation sonarmen and uh, everybody on board the surface ships can get some experience tracking submarines. This is really how it happens. Okay, so the submarine, I'm sure, had an absolute field day with the fleet until the admiral or whoever was in charge of the drill said enough's enough. Uh, you know, the submarine's getting all the training and the surface guys don't know where you're at other than we're being sunk a lot. Right. And so that's probably what this photo is, is them establishing their position. Hey, we're here. We're really shooting you, you know, with these imaginary weapons in this training simulation. And so they snap this photo. Now from here, they'll do a full evasion and try and get away from the, from the uh, helicopters. And I'll tell you, it is pretty hard to get away from a squadron of helicopters. If they have more than one airborne, which they probably do, uh, it's pretty hard to get away from them once you're, once you're detected. So I'll give uh, the aviation community that credit. But I remember one case, and I got to be careful with a lot of these stories, but they asked us, we, we were prosecuting two uh, warships. It wasn't a full carrier strike group, but we were doing training with two uh, destroyers and they couldn't find us. And so they finally told us to come to uh, Periscope Depth. Oh, and they had, they had some aviation support as well. So we raise all of our mast antennas. We're like, here we are, we're over here. They still can't find us. And so they told us, would, that, would they asked us to broach the submarine. That's where you bring the submarine practically to the surface. So the whole sail, the thing that holds the mast and antennas is sticking out of the water with the little fair water planes and you know slapping that on the surface for, I don't know, a minute or two so they can get a radar bearing on us and then prosecute us from that. So, man, um, my point for telling this story is that's how this picture got taken. I bet you the submarine was not detected before uh, they raised all their mast and antennas to give themselves away intentionally. And that is how it goes more times than not. And in my case, every single freaking time uh, we were very successful in prosecuting the targets and had to basically show ourselves to them so that they could get some benefit from the training. Anyway, great stuff. Love the photos. I'm glad they're sharing it with us. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Norway. Uh, the USS um, Mesa Verde, I had to pause on that one, is visiting Narvik, Norway. So here we go. This is a great photo from the deck of the Mesa Verde as she pulls into Norway. Norway has, was my first Liberty port and uh, it's such a beautiful and wonderful country. And there's a story I tell sometimes uh, to the people that follow me on social media about a bed and breakfast. Uh, my first night in Norway, I didn't stay on the boat. I went out and I, I found a bed and breakfast to stay overnight in. And it was run by a grandmother and her, I don't know, about college age daughter. And the grandmother took a liking to me for some reason. I don't know. I wasn't in uniform or anything. I was just visiting. And I ended up getting dinner with her and her daughter, as well as a bed and breakfast there for, for the same price. Very cool people in Norway, open, loving, wonderful, happy to see us all. I kind of think the grandma was trying to get us to hook up, but that didn't happen. You know, I'm sure the, the young lady now has a, has a great life of her own with a full family and all that. But man, what a wonderful first experience, experiencing another culture for the first time and then having them just greet us like that. It's amazing. If you want to see the world, join the Navy and actually join the surface fleet rather than the submarine fleet now. And you'll see a lot more ports like that. 
Good times. All right, so let's bring it back home. Let's wrap this up. USS George Washington and USS Carl Vinson are doing some local ops, keeping that edge sharp. As an American sailor, whenever I look at this map, I feel proud because look at what we're doing with the limited resources we, we, we have and all the problems we have. We still are able to support our allies in every single theater. So a big shout to the United States Navy and Marine Corps getting the job done. Well done, guys. All right, and thanks for watching. Click the link in the description, support the channel, and thanks to Ground News for sponsoring the video. We'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah, my stories about the board games with surface ships is absolutely true, 100%. And it really makes me wonder, why in the world are we spending $12 billion on aircraft carriers that are gonna get sunk the first time they meet a submarine?